Okay, welcome uh, to my discussion panel, uh, our round table. As you can see, it is not round table, unfortunately. But I we think can we can sit in a round. No, I don't want to sit. <laughs> I will stay. Uh, I think we will manage without that. So, our uh, topic is to discuss a little bit about quality. Not only testing, but about quality. And the first thing would be, I would like to ask you to sit somewhere here, if you could, in front of us because it would make it uh, easier to communicate. Uh, the plan of the talk, of the discussion, is to actually discuss what could we do, except testing, in the area of managing quality. So, uh, my first question would be, are you testers? Who of you are testers? Who is not? Who are you? <laughs> and why are you here? <laughs> You are just sitting here. Okay, fine. Who else? <laughs> who else is not a tester? Okay. I'm both. You're both. Well, who are you? Project manager. Project manager, great. Uh, who, do we have any project managers? Any business analyst requirements engineers? <laughs> Me too. Okay. okay um, do we have any developers? That's, that's great. really great, a developer great. attending a testing co uh, <laughs> congress. Congratulations, you should Congratulations. appreciate your uh, yeah, colleagues appreciate. to come more. <laughs> Run. <laughs> Not yet. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't want to say it loudly, okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, we have developers, maybe we have some architects. No. Nobody knows what that is. Uh, yeah, I heard about so, uh, people like that. Okay, so we, we have uh, plenty of people, including testers, developers, managers. And <clears throat> the second question would be, what are we going to talk about? We are not going to take a talk about testing. So you can leave now. <laughs> but to be honest, we are not going to talk only about testing. We are going to talk about quality. And my second question would be, how do you understand quality? Everything works perfectly. Good luck. Product fits the requirements. Yes. Requirements, something for you, Hans. Yes. Okay. Right. <laughs> so we have a keyword: requirements. Who are making notes? You, please. Yeah, but she doesn't have a pencil yet. Uh, do we have something to write on? Okay, it's a work in progress. Requirements. So, to manage quality, we need to have requirements. Do you agree? No. Not necessarily. No. <laughs> Be careful. So, uh, I don't understand clearly what, you, what, what is the first sentence, but I understand quality of the product having no requirements. Okay, I will repeat. It is possible to make a good product without strict requirements. Do you agree? Yes. It is, yes. How do you define the quality in this case? If common sense, okay. Clients are happy and the uh, product meets uh, business values. Business value, okay, another keyword. Yeah, requirements, business value. Okay. Well, uh, I, I heard another keyword, that's client. Client. Okay. If we don't have a customer, what's quality? If, and if we don't know customer. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we that's have it, but we don't that understand that the customer needs. <laughs> you are the customer now, right? Okay. That's good. Uh, why are you studying? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> All right. Please. Uh, so, uh, the product just works as it should work. Not, not only the requirements, it's everything. Works everything as it should work. Okay. okay. All right. So, more or less, we know what is quality. Соответствие ожиданиям. Expectations. Okay. So, this is more or less how we are going to define quality. And now the question would be, the question in the meantime would be, how are we going to ensure that our product has this quality? Testing is one method, right? 
But there is one problem with testing. I'm not sure if you can express this problem. It's too late. <laughs> yeah, basically it's too late. You are testing something that is already working or already in, in development, something that is already in preparation. And it's a little bit too late. So what can we do, apart from testing, to ensure quality? Feedback. Analyze and feedback. Test the requirements. Okay. And this is something... Excellent. Testing requirements? Yes. He was first. <laughs> but yes, okay, we can test the requirements. What if we do not have requirements? It's not impossible, actually. It's not possible. It's now, not you, possible. You, you possible. always have the requirements. Uh -huh. Maybe you don't have written requirements. Maybe okay. you don't have specifications. Okay. But if we start developing something, somebody has uttered some new requirements. We can look at products analogous. Similar products. Yeah. Similar so products, yeah. For so we can compare maybe. to similar products. Okay. So experience. Our experience as a users, as a business, as a customers, yeah, as a developers, and so on. Uh, monitoring user activity, okay, and watching people working and operating. This is something that can, can help us. And sorry, we have a standard in which there are six characteristics of the program product. I think I understood. Uh, you are talking about quality model uh, with yeah, yes. quality characteristics. Yes. yes. The, the new version of this model is called Square. Very helpful, very, very useful as a, let's say, a kind of benchmark for our purposes. Okay. What else can we do to deliver value, to deliver the quality? Testing. Talk to people. Talk to people and ask them. Talk to people. Communicate, exactly. It is so obvious, right? We are talking all the time, right? It is so obvious that we do not even realize that communication is everywhere. And without communication, you can talk a lot about products, you can test everything, and you will end up with a product that will be evaluated by the customers like something, oh, that's a nice software. This is not what we wanted. Why? Because you didn't ask. You didn't ask for feedback. Someone said for, uh, about feedback, you. Okay, so talk. Good. What else? Определить ресурс, то есть стоимость. Какую мы обладаем, какой стоимостью, да, мы обладаем на проект. Okay. Okay, so... ресурс. Calculate value and... Okay, so estimate, let's say, estimate the project. Okay, this is the part of the quality. For sure you know the so-called quality triangle. Cost, what was that? Uh, scope and time. Yeah? Mm -hmm. If you have uh, too small budget and too less resources, you can dream about quality in most cases. <laughs> okay, so we have, let's call it like a project restriction or project limitation. What else we need or what else can we talk about in terms of ensuring quality? Communication we had, uh, comparison to expectations, to different uh, similar products, uh, talking, communication, uh, I already said it. What else? Um, can of course we, you can. Why, why would you, if you can oh, talk, you can influence I would ask someone. question, uh, who do you want to influence? Well, uh, developers, for example. Okay. And now my question to you, dear <laughs> testers, do you have this power to influence developers? He's do still you here. Need, do you need power to influence? Do you need power? Yeah. No, you don't need the power. You so need, what do you need? Uh, Self-assurance and, and persuasiveness and that, that, that kind of things. Power, hierarchy won't help you. Okay. It's a different uh, names for same thing. Ability to influence by uh, yeah, by to influence. talking, by forcing somebody, by uh, way way around some way. 
by sharing common thoughts, for instance. And also, I think you have to have a trust from somebody who, would, who you would like to influence, they need to trust you. Uh, yeah. Trust. <laughs> Another different word. Trust. Uh, do you work in agile projects? Agile. Okay. So you know that trust is something like a basis. If we want to work with people, if we want to work for customers, with customers, we need to have some trust between us, between us and our development team, and between, uh, let's say, our team in general. Okay. <clears throat> so, in summary, we need communication, we need trust, we need to have uh, requirements, uh, we need to have the team and communicate with, co cooperate with the team. What else would we need to ensure quality? Tools. Tools, okay. Are tools helpful? It depends. Why? It depends because different tools uh, helps in different situations. Okay. So mm, there is no uh, one uh, every переведите, пожалуйста. Нет, короче, универсального инструмента. No common tool. There is no common tool. So mm -hmm. it's about uh, can we call a, a process or methodology a tool? Okay. Process and tools and methods and techniques. That's all true. Чек-лист, список того, что мы будем, ну, что есть вообще для тестирования, что нужно протестировать. Okay. Uh, list of features for testing. Okay, list of uh, things for testing. Uh, I heard something like recommendation? Documentation. Oh my God. Finally, <laughs> documentation. What kind of... Test documentation. Do we need it? Okay, it's not required, it will be helpful. Do you all agree? Because sometimes we have no time for creating documentation. No time or no need. And again, if we would like to summary what we discovered so far, I would say that our first step to try to manage quality would to establish what actually we are going to achieve. Tools, technique, processes, great, but forget about it if you are not, if you do not know where I go. So first thing, what we need to know is to know the product or the thing that we are going to deliver, to know the target audience, to know the requirements, expectation and so ever. It doesn't matter if it is documented or not, actually. The only thing you need to know what is the target, what, is the, uh, what are the expectations of the target. And then you can think how to ensure that the quality of the product will be done. How to do it? I would say you need to know to, to have some processes. Not necessarily documented, not necessarily very on, in very high level of formality. You need to have some processes allowing you to ensure this quality, to build this quality in. And now, what is the basis for this quality? I would say that quality requirements. So you need to establish some kind of quality goals that will be in this product. Do you agree? Yeah, of course. Come to my uh, presentation next. Yeah. Actually, he will be talking about requirements just after this uh, discussion. We have a question here. Необходимо осознанность команды в первую очередь. Команда должна понимать, какой продукт она делает и вкладывать туда свою душу, ну и в принципе стараться сделать хороший продукт, иначе из ничего не получится. Если один тестировщик об этом думает, ну это не вариант. All members uh, should have understanding what they do uh, mm -hmm. and uh, why they do this new program, application and something like that. Okay, good point. How are, we going, are we, you going to know or to ensure that you have the new links about what is the purpose of the product? Why are you actually building this product? Meetings, okay. Meetings with, for example, customers or stakeholders or project team explaining what is the goal, right? Any types of meetings 
Communication. Yeah. Okay. How else? Is there any other way that you can possibly know what is the application of your product? What is the usage, the, the target usage of your product? I use uh, gamification a lot for that. And we draw with all the stakeholders. We sit around the table and we draw a picture. What is the impact of the software when it will be done? And if people cannot draw, you don't need the drawing skills for that, but if you cannot visualize what will be impact and you cannot explain it simply to somebody others, the problem is in your side. Because it should be simple what it is doing in the way that you should visualize it and you should say uh, it's kind of a game and if we achieve it, then we succeed. Okay. What else? Do you know five wise technique? Five wise? Mm -hmm. Five watts. Yeah. Uh, what is uh, this technique about? You know it. Yeah. So you can simply explain. Okay. Well, if you, that's part of what we requirements engineers call elicitation, getting the expectations out of the the customers and your stakeholders, and asking the five Y and H uh, qu one H uh, questions helps. What? Do we need? Why do they need it? When do they need it? Who does need it? Where do we need it? And how do we achieve it? If you ask these questions to all the stakeholders that surround you, you get a better um, understanding of the real needs for your application. And of course, normally, this should be the work of a business analyst or so. But don't rely only on what these business analysts say. You, as a tester, can ask the same questions in preparing your test cases, just to understand what is really relevant to test and what's not relevant to test. Just one more sentence about this. In the worst case, or in the best case, when you are asking your customer or the business uh, why, in regards to some product, you can get an answer, I have no idea why, why do I need this picture. And this is a clear feedback for you that perhaps this feature is not needed at all. Because if someone cannot justify the value and cannot give you the, the reason of existing of things, that's probably meaning that it's not necessary because it brings no business value. And this is the, this kind of questions that you can ask. And also the opposite situation is that you ask why and you have a very quick question. And you should not be satisfied because it's five whys, but then each of them you should apply more. So you ask why, you have a question, and you should ask again why, again and why. Because the first answer is very often wrong, or it's kind of illusion or something like that. So ask again, especially if the answer was very quick and very nice, like, yeah. and maybe you expected that. It usually... It's not correct. Yeah, that's what we call the goal hierarchy that you can discover by asking repeatedly the why question. And for every answer for a why, there's another why. Why would you need that then? And in ideal world, in the end, you are get to the root cause, the real pro the problem or the real reason. Uh, by the way, just a small off, tip, off topic, you can use five why techniques also to root cause of defects, and this is something that is very typical for testing uh, activities. For example, if you are finding a bug on production or in testing, you can always try to uh, establish the real cause of the problem. And by establishing and eliminating the real problem, you are able to improve the process, not only the product. Mm -hmm. So this is another application of this uh, technique. Yeah, and we do it far too, uh, too, too few moments. Uh, we should do much more on root cause analysis of the defects that we find, because that's where we really have the gold for our, for your business, uh, the root causes and eliminating them. Then we they won't make these errors in future anymore. Exactly, and uh, you are working as a tester, so I'm pretty sure that you know very well that in testing sometimes we are finding the same issues, not only in the product, in the process, in the working with people. All, this, all, this, this, all the time the same problems, the same issues. And that should give you a clear sign that something is not okay here. Because if you are repeat, repeating the same bugs, the same errors, the same problems, that means probably that your process is not make sure. 
that you are not learning on your mistake, mistakes. Mm -hmm. And probably the cause of this, the reason of this, is that you do, do not know these problems, actually, the, the, the causes. You are only fixing the effects, yeah, what you can see. And you can see defects, but you have no idea what is the root cause of the defects. If you do not know the root cause, you are not able to remove it. If you are not able to remove it, you are not able to improve the process. And that all sounds great, but what it has to do with quality and managing quality. Root causes, improving the process. What I'm talking about? Revenge? Like preventing them. You are talking about retrospective, yes? Yes, again, uh, also about retrospective. And why do we need retrospective to learn? To know what we are doing in the correct way, what we are doing in not correct way. The things that we are not we are doing in the wrong way, we need to improve. Or of, of course, you can always say that I don't care because this is not my job, this is project manager job or someone else. But in the end, you will fix the problem. Yeah? You, will de you will need to deal with the, with the problem. So in your best interest, is to try to improve the process, is try to influence the quality. I'm not talking only about the quality of the product, because to be honest, you as a tester have very limited impact on the quality of the product. He has, developer, yeah. business analyst, or requirements engineers, because they are creating the designs, they are creating the code, they are creating the product. We are doing what? We are testing. We are delivering information, what is very, how, uh, very valuable, very important, but we normally are not able to fix the product, right? So what we can do, we can deliver information about the quality of existing product, we can deliver information about possible improvements, and that's the value com coming from our work. If we want to do something more, we can do things that you already mentioned, we can test requirements. And my question would be, how could you test requirements? Requirements is something that is not visible, something that is written or expressed. How can you test requirements? Okay, requirements have uh, testability. Have you heard about this, testability of requirements? Have you heard about quality characteristics for, uh, for requirements? You heard. <laughs> I did, yes. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about it, okay. But there so, was a question over there. Yeah. Well, uh, first thing to check maybe that uh, requirements uh, don't contradict to each other. There is no flaws, uh, like logical flaws, and uh, uh, maybe you're familiar with uh, this kind of product and uh, you know, well, a vague model of what it uh, would be and you could say you can say in advance so that that thing won't work. You need to uh, change uh, not to change the execution or so, something like that. Okay. So the fact if the requirements are not contradicted, contradictory to each other. So if they're consistent, what else can you check? If they are clear, if you understand the requirements, if you have a problem, if you have questions, developers will have also. Customer have, uh, can have too. Yeah. What else can you check? You can check something that is called measurability. And I will give you a very sh uh, short example. Uh, the system should be usable. Not love. The performance usable. should be good. The system should be usable or the system should be fast. Yeah. Clear, right? Of course. But not enough. Why? What's the problem with this statement? There are no metrics. So basically, if you are getting requirements like something should be usable, okay, fine. How do I test it? How I, I am going to prepare test cases? How I am going to develop it? No idea. And then I will deliver something based on my interpretation. I will provide it to tester. Tester will test it. The tester will will state, for example, okay, it's quite usable for us. No, but it's not usable for for tech now with his hand. <laughs> <laughs> Can you? It works. Okay. Failed. <laughs> okay. Anyway, 
you can say that based on your experience and based on the fact that you are working on this product, so you actually know it. For you, it may be usable. For your customers, you will have a problem how to turn it on. And the problem with the requirements is it's not measurable. You are not able to test it. And another example of this uh, of uh, requirements, very typical, the system shall be working on uh, all browsers. Perfect. All. Yeah. It's clear, all. Yeah. It's clear. All in the past, all in the future. Yeah, good luck again. Yeah. All browsers, all here. resolutions. Hmm? What is a browser? Okay. Но смотрите, любая система делается от конкретного заказчика. То есть мы можем представить, мы имеем представление для кого делается эта система. Если система делается для французской бабушки, то тестировщик должен стать этой французской бабушкой. Он должен понимать, что нужно французской бабушке, когда у нас нет требований. Okay. Uh, we need to understand our client and if uh, we create application for French granny, we, <laughs> we will be a French granny. Mm -hmm. So, exactly. So, can you call, can you name this technique? You can, I know. I, I should have. Gathering expectation, yeah, but the, 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 the technique of changing shoes, of changing perspective. Persona. Persona. That's yes. persona. Yeah. I am not IT uh, person now. Now I am a user of this. And I am trying to behave and think like the user. It's not perfect because so or so I am IT guy. So I have, you know, I am a little bit blind. I cannot realize all the uh, expectation and limitation, for example, of this person. But at least I can imagine a persona. French grammar. Yeah. Or someone who is not completely familiar with any IT, any kind of uh, equipment like that. Imagine that you are a person who has this thing first time in, the li in, in, in his life. Are you able to turn it on? Are you able to use it? Because I, I saw people, um, people uh, have also problems with what should be the distance between my mouth and this. Like that. Can you hear me? You can, I know. Because I <laughs> Can you hear me? Hey. Now it's better, right? But how do I know it? Experience, yeah. But new users have no experience. So if I am doing things for people who have no experience with this some kind of business, I should try to imagine how this kind of people are working, are thinking, are behaving. And this technique, um, to do this exercise, you can use the technique of persona. Or the empathy map. Or the empathy map. Or yeah, quickly, uh, whenever somebody asks me like about testing requirements or testing whenever, for me it's a transition from state I don't know to I know. And the requirements is the same. You should assume that you don't know and the requirement should provide the answer. And you should be, at the start you know nothing, then you know small things, and the things which you don't know are growing, then you get your answers. And if you cannot get the answer, it's a wrong requirement. It could be, is it fast, is it slow? It could be, I don't know how a French grandma works. So this not knowing, you're building a big mind map or net of not knowing, and then you are answering the things that defines that. That fits really nice in an agile development in which you develop your knowledge of the requirements during the course of the project, step by step. We are all, we are all uh, talking about, uh, let's say, collecting information, knowing the business, knowing the user, uh, eliciting the information. Can we do something more to ensure quality? Let's assume that we did all we do, all we could. Uh, to collect information from the business, from the users, from the stakeholders. What else can we do? What may do? Focus group. Focus group. Usability testing, okay. Maybe, maybe we can try uh, to do the models and uh, um, uh, try to involve uh, the uh, focus groups mm -hmm. uh, to test the model. Not the uh, not the implementation or product. Right? Okay. 
only the model. It uh -huh. is. Uh, it will can um, do faster. Okay. Than Earlier the, in the, the life cycle. The finish mm -hmm. product. Okay, so we can use models. We can use prototypes. Do you have prototypes or models in your projects? And you can test it. You can ask users. If you have access to users, you can invite users and try to test with them. Sorry, did we miss uh, actual spending our available resources to actual testing? Or maybe it's in the future or not? What do you mean? No, we need to actually test something. We, uh -huh. we gathered information, we have some uh, remaining resources to spend for actual testing, for determining the, how is it, it is working. Are we missing it, or is it in the future maybe, uh, and we didn't, just didn't get to it? We didn't get to it. Okay, yeah. thanks. We are trying to follow <laughs> step by step how we are going to ensure quality. We can work on requirements and expectations. We can test concepts, let's say. What else? Then we will test, of course. In two months or something like that, we will test. <laughs> okay. What else? What? Okay. Mm -hmm. A-B testing? So we, we, we will have a small group of just like customer-like persons which will use our product just like beta alpha testing or something. Mm -hmm. Beta alpha testing, okay. What else? Um, increase uh, speed of uh, usual things uh, uh, like uh, enter in uh, your project pipeline techniques, uh, CI, or something okay. like that. Okay, and now we are going into difficult things. <laughs> yeah, technical stuff. And now I am tester. Actually, it's not true. I am business analyst now, so I shouldn't be standing here. But uh, to be serious, I am a tester. I am not a technical guy, probably. And he's talking about some technical stuff, like continuous integration, like continuous de delivery. What does it have to do with testing and quality? It helps things, really, because we are working faster, we are working better, and, and etc. Mm -hmm. And we get it earlier feedback, so we yeah, can improve our product. Of course. Feedback about what? Quality of product, quality. Yeah, possible bugs. But are we as a testers responsible for doing this continuous something? Yes. Okay. We use it. In some cases we can do it. In some cases they are doing it. Glad we have a developer in the room. <laughs> Very good, yeah. <laughs> we will state the problem, he will fix it. <laughs> Run. No, uh, l l like the point is that you need an involvement, uh, an involvement of everybody. So sometimes testers can do it, sometimes developers. An involvement of the user. And I hear, what if you don't have access to the user? It's always excuse. In our world, you will have access in your user if you really want. It could be using Skype, it could be using some virtual, you can travel and so on. And I, n I really do not believe you have no access to users at all. Even in military, you can have access to that soldiers, really, if you really push for them. If you push or if you just plan it, and this is a problem in many projects that, uh, in, at least in, from my experience, it looks like we are trying to ensure quality. We have no idea about what is quality, actually. We are trying to manage project without any knowledge what is about, uh, what is managing quality about. Which is really strange because managing quality is part of project management. So, if you are talking about accessing the users, I agree that it is, in most cases, feasible. It can be done. But what is the, mo the, the problem in real projects? That you need to plan it in your advance. So you need to talk with your customer, with your stakeholders, that, for example, in two months from here, I will need some of your soldiers to talk with them. I will need someone from hospital, like doctor, like, I don't know, nurse. I will need two hours of her time to talk or to join our workshop. And this is something that should be planned. Because if you are working on a product, and then suddenly, in the, min in the middle of testing, you will realize, hmm, I need a nurse to check it. 
and then you are going to your project manager and you are saying, I need a nurse, so talk with the customer and bring me the nurse. Then the, the, the project manager will talk to the customer and the customer will probably tell you, forget about it, because she's busy now. Yeah, so we are going to one important thing, the quality process should be planned. Maybe not formal, but it should be planned. Some ma major uh, milestones, let's say, key points should be planned in advance. Isn't it uh, main questions that uh, test plan uh, answer for? No. Quite like, but not. Okay, I see. Thank you. Let's make a step back because it is quite important. What is a test plan for you? In agile, especially. <laughs> Shah, <Matt. laughs> Shah. Yeah. What is a test plan for you? Schedule, okay. Tasks, testing tasks, okay. Approach. Approach. Okay. But it's all about testing, testing resources. If you will follow ISTQB or another IEEE standard, test plan is something that is summarizing test activities in a project. It's perfect. But from the quality management pers perspective, it is focused only on a limited area of quality, on testing. Yeah, so I agree, it's a it is focusing on area that is a little bit too late. Another document that actually answered this need, because we have a document for that, we have documents for everything. Yeah. This document is sometimes called a quality plan. Quality or quality assurance plan. And in this document, you are a um, document, mind map, whatever. It can, uh, cannot be just a, mustn't be uh, just a word document. In this document, you are stating what are your quality goals. So what quality level you need to establish. What quality processes do you need? Like quality assurance, like quality control, which is, which is testing actually. Like quality improvement, including all the retrospective, including all the lessons learned. And this is about quality. Testing is just, a, let's say, a section of this plan. The question is, just a moment, who of you have heard about quality plan, quality assurance plan? Do you know your quality plan that you're working on? Test strategy, okay, you've heard about it. Test design, okay, we have another smart name. Test design. Test design scenario, is it the same as specification, okay? This is not this. Test design specification is a specification of test cases, test scenarios. This is information showing you, explaining you how to test the product. But what about how to ensure that the product is of good quality? This is not that. But interesting question. We use a plan, test plan, form 3E, in which we consider the issues of quality as a subpoint, as a application, entering into the full retrospective ретроспективу всех действий по проекту на несколько лет, если он длительный, на краткий промежуток времени, и в него уже входит, может быть, вот этот вот quality plan. То есть он как раз отвечает по всем тем пунктам, которые мы сегодня рассматриваем. Вот. Поэтому интересно, как его отдельно так выносить, и неужели он не входит в тест-план, стандартный и почему он не входит <laughs> как-то сейчас вот странно so. uh, so I about that, uh, in, uh, her work they have a test plan uh, that included quality plan inside because they use form 3i as I remember yeah no. <laughs> yes. mm -hmm. so so uh, I would say it's just like semantics. And on some projects, you call it test plan, it's actually a quality plan. On some other projects, you don't have it. And the thing is that very often you join the project, it's running, 
And then you ask the question, can you give me a uh, quality assurance plan? Like, what are main objectives? And the answer is, here is a test plan. And that's too detailed. So you should go up and asking these questions. And I guarantee you, you will not find the answers. Nobody will know. And they will, yeah, that's a test plan that just tested. But the answer should be asking more questions, like why we are testing this, how we will approach it at the end, what are the preconditions, and for what users, and so on. Because test plan is good, but if you don't have these high-level answers, you are screwed. Uh, and maybe you will deliver the project, but it will not be a good one, and they will realize later. But yeah, if it is called test plan, QA plan, it's about content, so it could be maybe semantics problem, how to call it. Mm -hmm. Be careful with semantic, <laughs> because the problem is that normally in testing and in IT, we are using a kind of vocabulary, a kind of glossary. And if you are following some common standards, uh, international standards, test plan has a meaning. Quality plan has a meaning. And if you are referring to, project, to test plan as to quality plan, I can be confused. Mm -hmm. yeah, so be careful with the names because names has a diff uh, difference. If, you are, if your project, test plan, is my quality plan, Fair enough, but we need to be clear on this. And this is the case of communication again. So if you are using this kind of words, you need to explain them. In glossary somehow, to make it clear that I, for example, as your customer, I understand you in the same way that you want me to understand. Otherwise, we will get totally confused. International okay. standards may help. Uh, uh, yeah, international standards. You can, perhaps you are not a big fan of standards because Standard sounds really oh, not nice. Standard IEEE, ISO, but they are good actually. They are providing some framework, some glossary voc vocabulary, some let's say good practices. So don't be too afraid of them. And if you are using standards, actually these standards are answering the questions. And now I think we can go to a short short summary of this. Okay, here we have a list of bullets. Now I will change our roles. I will try to summarize it. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Susanna. Because, because if we would like to, let's say, manage our quality, what we need to do? We need to plan the quality. So let's call it according to ISO, ISO standard, quality planning. Right? We need a plan, otherwise we, are not go, we do not know what we are doing for who are, who are we doing, uh, how to measure it. And what can we actually do in this case? What we need? We need to have some kind of quality goals. You can call it quality requirements, you can call it, uh, you can call it quality expectation. It's semantics, yeah? Mm. Where is Wojtek here? Okay, our semantic guy, <laughs> okay. <laughs> quality goals. Like for example, you need to have a product that satisfies the customers. It is very high level quality goal. That the customer, for example, we have a glass, and this glass must be nice for me as a customer. I must like this glass. Must be full. <laughs> okay, don't go this way. <laughs> okay. What does it mean that the glass is nice for me? I need a metric. Yeah. Otherwise, it's nice, but for you, you can say, well, ugly. Yeah. So I need to have a metric. But metric is not working if I do not have the reference point. A, a kind of reference point is our customers, or the target audience, let's say. How to, let's say, express the, the target. You can uh, do some market research, you can do some customer uh, research, you can use the persona technique, many more. Yeah? If you are interested in this, in this um, target, um, let's say, research, you can uh, read a little bit um, about business analysis and about discovering the business needs. It is a lot of this stuff. Okay, so we have quality goals, we have metrics, so we have goals, we, we know how to measure it, we need who is our target. What else we should do in our quality planning? What else? 
What? Report. What kind of report? I mean, uh, we need uh, to add uh, some system of uh, creating reports of uh, our testing process. Uh, what? Uh, Can I call it like that? Yeah. Okay, so I need to have, I would say something more. I need to have something like monitoring and reporting process. So in scope of our planning, I need to have a process activity including tools allowing me actually to check if I am, wow, I am breaking word, if uh, I am about to achieve this quality. I need to have, for example, tool uh, collecting uh, metrics, collecting information from testing, from development to show me if the achieved level of quality is according to the plan. If not, then I will need to implement some um, uh, Corrective, corrective action. activities. Okay, I have to, I need this process. Do you see any other things that I need to have on the planning level? Yeah, maybe uh, the time, delivery time, where, where the product has to be ready? Delivery time, so you are saying about schedule. Uh, right? Quality risks. Excellent. Quality risks. The resources team. Resources team. Okay, so schedule resources. Why do I need it? Why do I need to establish a schedule or resources at this stage of planning? To understand how much could you test, to understand actually what you can do, assuming these limitations that you have. To create a strategy, not only test strategy, also the technical strategy, all the CIs and, and so on. Okay. Uh, can we add any recommendation from company what tools we should to use? What in tools? This, yeah, in this Forget about process. tools. That's no, my recommendation. No, no, no tools. <laughs> no, okay. no, 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 no. Don't start with tools. That's my recommendation. First thing, what are you, are you going to do? What you need to do, actually, in this order. Then you can think about tools. Carolina, yeah. uh, am I a bit lost or are we still on the phase? Like early phase of the project? Because I assume that uh, it's a living document which will adapt and change a lot. But now we are pointing things which we need to know at the start or really phases of the project, right? We are at quality planning stage. Yeah, but yeah. the quality planning document, for example, resources, you will probably add a, a Resources later, needed so. to achieve this required level of quality. Because sometimes to achieve the level of quality actually uh, resulted from the quality goals, you need to have special resources. Like, for example, where is my phone? I forgot my phone, okay. Uh, to test an application on iPhone, on uh, Samsung, on whatever, whatever, perhaps I would need to have this phone physically, which impacts schedule, which impacts budget, which impacts actually physical resources. So this is, I am talking about uh, this in this, uh, this sense. Yeah? yeah, but the most important resources are the people uh, doing it. People are not resources, people are people. <laughs> People are risks. Yeah. Well, in, no, no, in, no. in quality plans, often people are mentioned as resources. I know, so I hate yeah, it, yeah. but yeah, yeah, you're right. Anyway, I understand the idea, but I'm. It's all about semantics, right? Mm -hmm. For me, resources are things like this is resource. Okay, this then, is but resource, then you yeah? sh surely should add people uh, as the first and most important thing that you need in a plan. Hmm. Okay, yeah, I will fix it later. Resources, people. Okay. So, more or less, that's all, all about quality planning. Then we have something like, actually, I am following ISO uh, 9000 uh, standard. We need to have something like quality assurance. 
Which means testing, right? No. 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 People are always confusing it. QA is not testing, I'm sure. Q more. Yeah. Much more. Quality, is, um, quality assurance is acting in a little bit different level of uh, abstraction and interest. Quality assurance is, on the, is working on the process level. So, to ensure quality, this quality state and point number one, to this quality state uh, as a quality goes, what do I need? <laughs> but come on, let's be realistic. <laughs> okay. Starving? Well, if you're McDonald's, yes, you're right. <laughs> okay. We, we need, need a team. What? Uh, sorry, we need the processes in yeah. quali quality assurance and uh, um, and possibility for changing them. I have both heads. Huh? One is just not used. We need a man to <laughs> rule others. Just a moment. We need yeah. a team. Okay, motivated, not starving or starving, whatever. And team that is qualified. What does it mean? People who actually can deliver this value. And it's not easy because if you are, no offense, guys, if you are just testers, focused only on quality control, you may have no idea about root cause analysis about five whys, about personas, customer journey, about usability uh, stuff. Why? Because you are testers focused on specified area. And to ensure quality, deliver quality, actually you need much more than just testing skills. And at this point, I will not say that now you need to buy a lot of books, a lot of webinars, or, read a, or watch a lot of webinars, you need to collect all this new leaks. Because perhaps in your company, in your team, this is not you who should do it. Perhaps you have business analysts, perhaps you have UX guys, perhaps you have usability um, uh, experts. The only thing that I want you to know, to realize, that quality is much more than just testing. And it's very good for tester, even for pure tester, to have this knowledge. To realize that to test product, I need to know what is the product for. Who is the audience of the product? Because I, I'm pretty sure that you will change your appro approach knowing it. I did the same. I started my job as a tester in banking company. We were asked to test the ban bank uh, product. It was a product that's supposed to uh, support uh, work of tellers, people working uh, in, uh, in bank chapters. And we were testing like this. We have requirements. This requirements is stating something. I am testing what the requirements is saying. And the system was working, actually, according to requirements. The only problem was that it's not working according to the business process and business uh, expectations. So, when I changed my perspective and I just came and asked the tellers, the real people, real tellers, what they are thinking about the solution, they said, they said me something like, it's not working for us. Why? All the transactions uh, just took too long, too many uh, screens, too many, you know, transitions between scre uh, screens, too many clicking. From the requirements perspective, from the requirements specification perspective, the system was working exactly according to requirements. So all the testing were passed according to the specification. So I could say I am a tester. I tested according to specification, it is working, the rest I don't care. But in this moment I am forgetting about quality. No, we have this context-driven school that <laughs> takes a, a completely different viewpoint for that, exactly. of course. And they say, what you did was not testing, it was checking. And checking is all they... <laughs> <laughs> no, but they have a point, in fact. <laughs> Yeah, but th that's, of course, uh, the main goal, especially when you're working in an agile team. You're not done with only checking. You have to explore and see what this, the system that you're developing is really doing for your clients, for your users. 
and then you go far beyond the written specifications, the written requirements, because there, 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 there has been some investigation about requirements. Do you realize that on the average, only 20% of the real requirements are documented. If you have a nice uh, design or something stating some requirements, realize yourself that this is only 20% of the real requirements. The other 80% are out there and it's up to you as a tester to get them out. Because you also, also have to test these 80% non-documented your real job and that's exploring the 20 percent that's checking okay this one this one okay everything works fine but then 80 percent of the system does not yet work as your end users work or maybe but you don't know Go ahead. there's one precondition for this approach that you said to test to check uh, undocumented requirements you need to have something Domain knowledge. Domain knowledge yeah. So if I, if you are working, for example, what is your area of, uh, let's say, uh, professional area, like banking, finances? Uh, insurance, right? No, with reports. What? Reports. Reports. Taxes yeah. uh, reports. Taxes reports. Great. So now. I am taking you from your job and I am allocating you to test insurance, for example, algorithms, with no documented requirements. It would be difficult. Come to my presentation, I have excellent examples from that. Exactly. exactly. So, what else is needed to actually implement this, um, what Hans told about? You need to have business knowledge. Please. I'm trying for five minutes. <laughs> to add something to your speech. Communication <laughs> semantics. <laughs> yeah. Actually, uh, all these points we are talking about uh, relates to one more, uh, to one main uh, goal and thing we are talking a bit later, uh, uh, a bit before. Uh, the common goal uh, of the whole team, the whole team of the project is to um, think uh, wider, maybe. To, mm, when, when, um, Everyone is working. Uh, test, analy test analyst, uh, business analyst must um, ask more questions uh, every time. Developer must uh, think uh, wider when uh, he's implemented his code uh, according to um, any situations can uh, raise. And tester always should uh, check much more scenarios than uh, 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 written in requirements, for example. This is not only testers, uh, this is not only uh, testers' goal to think uh, wider, it's the whole team goal, I think. Just a quick comment to that. I see that it's to your point, but also she wrote process. And one thing about semantics which always helped me, I am trying always to avoid word process. And better word for that, it's agreement. Because agreement means the team agrees. And you can have a process, excellent process, but if a team doesn't agree about that, that's useless. So. Yeah, it's just the semantics, but if you start calling process agreement, then people will have to agree with that, right? And it's small change, small difference, but it's huge. Yeah, it means that you have a process that is accepted by the team, yeah, right? That, that we as a team decide to do a, uh, our work on a certain way that we all agree to. That, that, and for that's example, a great uh, benefit for a team. As a team, you agreed that you are not a tester anymore, just clicking. You are also a kind of business analyst. You are also trying to understand the customer. You are helping the developers. This is the agreement. This is the way of working. And I would say that if you would like to really achieve quality, I think in most cases you need to forget about this strict, fixed role definition. Because imagine, you are a test, you know, you are project manager, sorry. Project manager, architect, developer, tester, business analyst, UX expert, non-existing. And 
you are now the team. And in this organization of work, you will try, you will be acting like that. He is managing. You are, you are architect, I believe. You are telling her what to do. She is doing some pro product. She is only testing what was delivered. In this case, of course, it will be working somehow, but it will not be working effectively. Because in the worst case, even if the developer uh, has any kind of questions regarding the requirements, the developer will say, it's not my job, I am just doing what's written in the specification or what the product owner or business analyst has told me. So I agree, it's about agree agree uh, agreement, what actually and how are we going to work as a team, not individuals. And if I may add something to that, testers are great in asking Stupid questions. Stupid there are no stupid questions. No, but there are stupid answers. Stupid questions between the quotes, because well, we can. It's our role to ask questions and to ask why is this? Well, I I see that. What's the meaning of that? And you can help. Be an enormous help for the business analyst, for the developer, for the, the system application manager, or whatever. Just asking much more questions than they could ever define, because they have their own specific, uh, specialization. But asking questions is the main benefit if you're of your role as a, as a tester. Not this checking and clicking, but thinking about what more can be done, what, what, what more risks do there exist. And we are and again, risks. Have you noticed? Risks. But by the way, I always say that QA means questions and answers. <laughs> yeah, right. Because yeah, we should be asking a lot of questions, but we should also have a lot of answers, and these answers are about quality. So yeah, question and answers. Yeah, right. Of course, but answers don't come by themselves. You first have to define the questions, and only after that you'll find the answers. And we, we as a tester, we are. Our specialism is asking the questions, and the the answers can come from all the uh, the rest of the team. I would uh, add one thing, uh, ask only not, not only questions about the written requirements or the scope, uh, ask also questions about the all assumptions of the project. Because sometimes this is the problem, that we are doing project, we are doing product that is based on wrong assumptions. Because the business analysis or the problem recognition was done just wrongly. If I may add some, some tip for you uh, for, uh, in this uh, respect, read the book uh, Specification by exa uh, Example, because that is really starting by from... By Yeah, yeah. It's really starting from... Start with some exa uh, examples. You'll have many assumptions, and by adding new examples and checking whether it fits or not, you will be able to verify these assumptions. Yeah, right. Well, I'm a great fan of Goiko, yes. <laughs> okay, so let's summarize. This is something that we have in the uh, quality assurance area. Team, people, because to be honest, you can have process, you can have process agreement. If you have no people, then the process will not help you. Uh, by the way, uh, Agile is working based on the uh, individuals over processes, right? So you can ha you need to have people properly skilled. You need to have processes. You need to have processes for, let's say, assuring quality of requirements. Meaning, for example, reviews. Have you heard about this technique? Reviews. Are you doing reviews? <laughs> no. <laughs> why not? That's a why. Why? <laughs> she was first. I guess I guess making reviews is uh, something important uh, to to um, assure yourself that everybody in your team uh, thinks and says all the same way. And I guess yes. that, that the, the tester is that person in the team that cares about uh, that everybody uh, knows. Um, I know. Mm, everybody sees the same picture of the product. Everybody knows the same terms. Uh, everybody um, is 
everybody agrees about the vocabulary, about the schedules and so I must so forth. interrupt in this moment because I do not agree that tester is this person. Sometimes. Uh, <laughs> I know that sometimes and that means for me if tester is the only one who cares about quality, about common understanding, for me it's a sign that you have a real problem in your product or uh, project or organization. S sorry. It's about the communication, I guess. Uh, no, it's about role allocation. It's about, let's we'll say, the general maturity of the team and the organization, because who is actually responsible for the quality? Everybody. Everybody. In ideal world, everybody. But you perfectly know that if everybody is responsible, no one is. Right? So, that's in practical that, world... That's not that, John, what you're is telling us now, right now. Yeah. Uh, in my experience, I saw one project, Agile project, that was actually working according to Agile, and it was working. So, if I would like to give you some practical tips, I would say that if you have no real team spirit and the attitude that everybody cares about quality, then don't believe that everybody cares. Then you will have uh, you, you need to have some one person or several persons allocated to manage quality, to be, take the responsibility. Um, I don't care how you call this name, actually. In my project, the name is called Quality Manager. It's also working in Agile yeah, teams. It's Quality Manager, the person who is actually establishing these processes and is managing, monitoring these processes. And this person should take care that you have reviews in your process, that you have some practices, like for example, business analyst or product owner is reading, let's say, user story. And the user story should be communicated, should be agreed. The user story should, for example, maybe you know this mechanism, should pass definition of ready before implementation. If not, then you are not going to implement it, simple. This is the person that established the processes for quality assurance. This is working in the situation that you don't have a really self-organizing, caring team. And coming back to the, uh, to our, let's say, process, reviews of requirements, definition of ready for requirements. Do you know this ter term? That is working a little bit like entry criteria for requirements. So, me as a developer, as a uh, member of development team, I am not going to accept the requirement in a given iteration or sprint if it's not meeting the definition of, done, of ready. Which means, definition of ready could be something like the user story is written according to invest criteria. The user story is estimated. The user story is accepted by the team. If a user story is not meeting this definition of ready, we are not accepting it. Easy. That is working like a quality gate. And the great benefit of using this mechanism is that you are not wasting time on trying to understand and implementing things that are just not clear, not completed, not testable, not ready to implementation. Yeah, so that could be your one of quality gates. These gates for requirements, actually. Then you have in this process agreement, in your definition of processes, all the stuff that you are actually doing, checking the product, testing the product. Uh, you mentioned exploratory testing, yeah. other kind of testing, like usability testing, like testing the models, prototypes, all your stuff. But in the quality assurance plan, in your process definition, you should have also this technical stuff that we don't uh, really know about. This all uh, continuous integration, continuous del delivery, unit testing, all the things that our de developers and architects are doing. This is also quality. This is quality assurance. Perhaps you have no idea about this as a tester, but you should at least have idea that this is also a part of quality management. Maybe a quick comment to that you mentioned that we still need to do a lot of this. My experience is that usually we don't have enough time to do only these things. But really it doesn't matter. If you are doing only these things, you will not achieve a good quality. Uh, so, yeah. If somebody is asking you to improve your quality and so on, they need to find the resource, time and so on, and you need to lower it. And actually, I'm measuring myself for like six years already, how much I spent in a testing and other things. And it's like 20, maybe 25% is testing only, like real execution. 
SQA. The rest is all of these. But if your manager or somebody has ex uh, expectation that you will spend all of your time by testing, you should at first change this expectation, because otherwise it will be very tricky. I added two new points on the list, something that can also help ensure quality, inspection of code, something that is common in Agile, that people should care about the quality of code, like inspections, like peer reviews, like refactoring. And you may say, okay, it's not testing. Yeah, maybe it's not, but this is a part of quality management. What else is here? Retrospectives. You need to plan for this moment in project that you are just stopping for a moment and you are asking yourself, what are we going, what are we doing? What we did, what we did in correct way, what we did in incorrect way, what we need to improve, what we must improve. And again, for each of this point, there should be a person or person responsible. Because from my experience, if you will say to your project manager, we should have reviews in our, in our project. If you will tell me, yes, we should. And that's all. No, the reviews you will should, not go into... You should to ask some metrics uh, about it. Metrics, yes. And you know that uh, well, every hour spent... Uh, this is scientific uh, research uh, has been done about reviews. And you know that for every hour spent in review, you... Uh, save about 9 to 20 hours of um, waste later on in the project on uh, defect removal. That's, that's a, a fact. It's, it's been scientifically um, researched and, and proven. And Well, this could convince the most scrooges uh, project manager or customer because it really saves money. And, well, manager are I can confirm. Sometimes I have, let's say, problems with my project managers when I'm trying to enforce reviews or some kind of stupid things like root cast analysis or something like that. And they are saying, no, 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 we don't have time for it. Okay. We don't have time, we don't have budget. But then we have a budget for refixing, uh, fixing mistakes, uh, reworking. For that we have budget. Yeah. And to convince, to show the benefit of this all things like reviews and so on, I can easily prove it by going to the past project, showing the list of bugs that were identified as bugs resulted from, for example, missing requirements or problems with requirements. I can estimate more or less how did it cost to fix these problems. And this is the value. If we will implement reviews, we at least minimize, reduce the number of these problems. This is the benefit. Because doing these things, just for sake of doing this, it has no value. So all these things should be justified by, by, by some kind of goal, benefit, value, uh, some measurable in ideal world, yes. Okay. So now, let's say we have the quality assurance box. What then? Let's imagine we have all the processes, uh, processes including tools, because at this step, uh, step, actually, we can think about tools. Yes, tools are important. Yes, tools matter, but only when you, are, you actually know what you are going to do. Then it's the proper time to select tools. Okay, then the next process is quality control. So, quality control is basically about implementing realization the activities identified as part of quality assurance. So, here you can test, you can do testing, you can do reviews, you can do all the things like static analysis and so on. Again, I broke something. Here is the time for quality control. From my point of view, I am, as I said, I am business analyst, business system analyst now. now. For me, my own quality control is using 
this boring stuff like standards, like checklist, to check if my requirements are written correctly. If they are meeting quality criteria, and they are uh, written, written in the specified agreed before form. Like every single requirement should pass some specific quality requirements. Every single requirement should be written in agreed form, template. To avoid situation that, for example, I, my way of uh, reaching requirements is normally some UML models. Yeah, so I am most of the time I am modeling. It's, it's my way of working. Hans' way of working could be reaching user stories. And in one team, in one project, we should be co we should be consistent. Yeah, so, that's, consistency is one of the greatest quality uh, aspects that we can achieve within a team. It, it's not only about writing documents, it is all, all also consistency on the process view. So, if I am going, for example, as a project manager, if I am going to evaluate uh, the project progress in terms of some information, I would need this information, so I would need a metric. And the activities that the team is perf performing should actually result in providing this information. Otherwise, without this data, I will not be able to monitor the project. Okay, so we are going the quality control. We are mm, doing testing, reviews, static analysis. What else? We can do demo for the customer. Do you know this mechanism? Yeah. That's a perfect way of getting feedback. You already did something, you created half of glass, show it to the customer <laughs> and ask for opinion. You implemented a kind of a couple of uh, fixtures, show to the customer, to the users and ask for the opinion. And maybe not just to the customers, like you can, developer can do a demo Stakeholders, of yeah. Stakeholders to you during a development. As yeah. soon as possible, like demo, it's also like a quality gate or review or something mm -hmm. like that, the demo is perfect. Do you know the mechanism of definition of done? Definition of done, yeah. That's another quality gate. When you can state that your requirements is, your requirement is implemented according to some expectation, when it's done. Yeah. What does it mean when, it, when it's done? This needs to be defined. Your definition of done could be the uh, code is written, obviously. The code is written well, well, which means the code is commented, documented properly. The code is tested, so you, you have something like unit testing. Uh, what else? The acceptance tests uh, were done and they passed. The customer looked at the implemented requirement and the customer or stakeholder said, yes, yeah, fair enough, for me. then it's done. Not when only uh, implemented or, or not only when written or documented, then it's done. So that is a, another very info, important, very helpful quality gate. Huh? Plans according to IEEE documentation, I'm pretty sure that you know the term of entry and ex exit criteria for test uh, level. It is working the same, definition of ready and definition of done. When you are ready to start, when you are ready to close, close the process. So actually, you can use your own mechanism on different level of abstraction or information. To put the definition of done is we are happy. And yeah, happy. it changes everything. We are happy and satisfied and proud. It should be in definition of done. So I think that now we can talk, we can add to this definition some more resources helping to achieve definition of done, like, for example, I am happy when I get some cake. Can you do it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so that's the quality control. What else can you do? You can do some usability testing, yeah? Usability testing or UX testing, however you call it. That's on the quality control. You are controlling the quality. What else can you do here? Some kind of reporting. Yes, sometimes in some project it is uh, necessary to report your results, your output to the customer, to the project manager, to the stakeholders. This reporting should include information actually defined at the level of planning and should take the information from processes defined at the quality assurance level. And so, 
now we ended with quality control. We tested the product. The product is good. The customer and the stakeholders are happy. Is it enough if it comes about quality management process? What do you think? Test closure. Okay, let's close. Security? Closure. Security? Improvement. Security, okay. It's, it's Let's same. add it to different forms, types of testing. Of course. Okay, you said closure. And what we are going to do at the, let's say, test closure activity. <laughs> through window. Okay. I'll throw it to support, sorry, okay. Okay, we are trying to support, what, uh, but um, okay. I'm asking after about... The, uh, it goes after the quality control, I, I think we need uh, to analyze the project at whole. Analyze okay. uh, the okay. results and the project and the, the process like of the project. Evaluation of the process proje project. But this is not control anymore for me. Monitoring. I would say that is rather a part of, I know, uh, quality improvement. Step, I think, mm -hmm. after the quality control. Yeah, exactly. We are closing our project, yeah? But we are not closing like, okay, we've done SIA. We are coming to the next project. It, it shouldn't be done like that. When you are closing your project, when you are closing your quality control activities, in well done project, you should stop for a second, ask yourself what was done good, what to improve, evaluate your performance, evaluate your processes. Yeah, so this is why you need this evaluation. Perhaps you need some, I know it's not very popular, KPIs. Yeah, I know, but sometimes you need it to compare your current uh, effectiveness with the, let's say, desired one. Then you can talk about some areas for improvement, so what to do? Retro, exactly. It's a retro on the project. On the level. project, yeah. During the quality control and, quali and during the project, actually, you can you can do some small retros, like uh, project re uh, sprint retrospective. During after closing of the initiative you can you should do a retrospective of the, of the product and you should also agree about how the relationship with customer will continue like support trainings bug fixing and this follow up let's say what can you um, what techniques can you use for this pdca do you know this technique Deming cycle, you know, I am pretty sure you know. Plan, do, check, act. Now you know, of course. Uh, what else can you um, do if it comes for quality improvement? Now it would be not nice part. TMMI, CMMI, ISO, IEEE, what they are saying about quality, what they are saying about maturity of the process. TMMI, CMMI, they are about quali uh, matu uh, maturity of the process. Um, how to improve. You don't have to pass the certification. I'm not talking about this, but you can always read these documents. They are free. You can go to TMMI website, can download this TMMI, and see what do I need to do to improve my maturity? What is missing in my process? This is, what, this is something that you can do. It's for free. The only thing that you need to know, uh, or you need to do, is to just reserve this five minutes, two hours, whatever is needed, to read this document, to understand your as is, what are you, how are you performing now, to establish the to be, when are you want to, to go, and use available resources, materials, books, standards, to help yourself. Nothing more. I'm out. Yeah, I know. Okay. So Questions? I think we finished just in time. Yes, and we have a Two or three minutes for questions. I will take one minute as a summary. <laughs> okay. As okay. a summary, my dear, what I would like to you to, to well, say, uh, let's say, uh, take from this pre presentation from this uh, round table. 
don't focus only on testing because, as you can see, it's only a block in the whole quality management area. You need to plan, you need to establish the processes, a like process agreement, you need to control the um, quality and you need to work on quality improvement. And why, just last sentence, why you need to improve yourself and your processes? Because IT is very fast domain. If you are staying at the same moment, you are going, going back. You are, you are just not developing yourself, either your organization. So this is something that I would like you to take as a, let's say, take away from this discussion. Could you please give some recommendations on, maybe, on the improvements on the level of post-production managing, maybe supporting your product? Supporting my product. What do you mean uh, in particular? But everything is done, your product is in your client's hands, and then what? You can't just leave it. You must, uh, you must uh, keep the contact with the client, you must uh, you know, support the processes. Uh, what the key, maybe, key points? I would say if your product is already in production, it's running. The quality work is not done, that's for sure. What you need to do uh, at the level of your quality assurance plan, I would, say, so I would define some activities like we need to do the regression because the product may change. We need to do something like impact analysis to avoid situation that I will change small thing and the system will stop uh, working at all. So this is the part of the process that you can do. What else? You, you can think about uh, these resources, these people, who will maintain the system and what kind of new leech they should have. This new leech will come from you, from testers, like some test scenarios that you will pass to the maintenance team. This uh, new leech can uh, go through um, from developers, like developers will pass some automated test cases or whatever uh, to the maintenance team. So again, this is the same scenario. First of all, you need to know what kind of activities there can be on the maintenance then you will need to select proper tools and methods. What would be needed to ensure the quality level, the stable level of quality on the production? Which is very, very dependent from my point of view out of the, on the um, way of, or let's say, development plans regarding the product on production. Is it just going to operate or are you going to develop it, enhance, change? Yeah, it will impact the, the, the plan. Huge difference is that you finally have your users, and you have a lot of them, and that's the only change. So keep it in mind, you can have a feedback, but also now you can impact a lot of people. So that's the biggest change in production. That is why you have this regression in big letters. Remember, don't play with the system in production, <laughs> because you will impact users. So, Thank all. you very much for your active participation. We'll be there at 